Today, I am going to discuss on worm burden in pets and their control. Here, worm means endoparasites, the parasites which remains in the gastrointestinal tract of pets. The parasites or worms, they are existing as a pathogenic problem since time immemorial. That means for a long time or since the existence of the civilization, animal is to carry the worm burden. Not only animal, even the human being, they is to carry the worm burden. Now the question is that the worm if it remains the common cell for a long time, there is no problem. That means host and parasite relationship develops. That means both are benefited each other and the animal or the dog may not show any overt clinical signs. But sometimes it assumes a pathogenic role. What the worm actually creates in the animal. Actually, some of the worms, they absorb the intestinal contents, nutrients, and some suck blood from the intestine. That means whatever food or feed substances or vitamins or minerals is consumed by the pets, some part of them is being consumed by the parasites and the parasites gets bold and healthy and at the same time the dog becomes or pet becomes unhealthy. Right? And as a result of this nutritional deficiency, the dog may suffer in such a way that sometimes it may succumb even. Later on I will discuss about the manifestation or what happens by the worm, right? What damage the worm is to done to a dog. Now I want to discuss about the worms. Before I go for discussion, we can categorize the worms into two varieties. One is nematode, other is cystode. Nematode means round worm, the cystode means flat worm. Or in other ways, you can say nematode means ascarid group of worm, and cystode means tape worm group of worms. So let me give an overview on the nematodes. So what are the nematodes? Or how many nematodes used to affect dog? It's very important. We know only few, but let me elaborate how many round worms are being present in the dogs. So there are various nematodes affecting the various organs of the dog. Initially, I discussed on gastrointestinal nematodes. Now I will discuss on all the nematodes which remains in the body or various organs of the pet animal. So first is Toxocaracanis. Toxocaracanis is a round worm, right? And this Toxocaracanis sometimes it looks like white earthworm. It remains in the intestine for a long time and from the intestine the legs, right? And the, from the eggs, when pups and others, they pick up the eggs and it develops in the pups. Again, it goes to the cycle is going on. And in this way, all the groups or all the kennel mates, all the dogs 
they get infected. At the same time, when they excreted, excrete their feces in the soil or any floor or any place, so if somebody licks it, right, that flow will be infected with the Toxocara infection. Toxocara are two types. One is Toxocara canis, another is Toxoscaris leonina. That is Ascarid worm, right? This is Ascaris is very, very important because the migrations of these parasites or larvae of these parasites, when they migrate from various organs of the animals, animals get sick. And if you look at the animal, animal blood is lost, animals pot bellied, emaciated, right? Rundown conditions, inactive, right? So this is very important. This is important for two reasons. One reason is for the dog's health, and second reason is for human health. So one should be very, very cautious about this parasite. The next I am coming to another roundworm that is commonly called as hookworm. But in medical term we call it as Ankalashtoma caninum hookworm or another hookworm is there that is known as Ansenaria stephano cephala. These are the two hookworms. Hookworms are very very important. Why hookworms are important? Because they stick to the intestinal mucosa, right? Suck the blood of the from the intestine, and this blood and there is oozing of blood in the intestine. And when the blood comes into the intestines with the alkaline or acidic pH of the intestine, the blood becomes black. That's why if you get black feces or tarry colored feces, you may think of hookworm infestation. Therefore, one should go for examination of the stool and get verified that your dog is suffering from hookworm. Hookworm is a very dangerous parasite to the animal because it creates anemia. It creates anemia, severe anemia. An animal may die even due to anemia. Sometimes you are not in a position to reverse the anemia with medicine. Sometimes whole blood transfusion is required for severe anemic patient or iron transfusion is required for severe anemic patient. So hookworm is very, very dangerous. So we should. And hookworm, again I tell you, the hookworm may also somehow or other may enter into the human being, right? When the human being used to come in close contact with the animal or kiss the animal or from the floor pick up some substances and eat, especially the children. So in that way they may suffer from this roundworm infection. Then another roundworm is known as whipworm and we call it in as Trichuris pulpis. The incidence is more or less less and remains in the latter part of the intestine of the dogs. Very interestingly, I am telling about one worm which remains in the trachea. Can you imagine? Trachea contains, or trachea is the place where worm is to remain. And this tracheal worm is very important, and this tracheal is known as phyloroids. Phyloroids oslerae. So, Phyloroids oslerae, the tracheal worm, they remain in the trachea and create irritation and inflammation as a result of which the dog used to cough. We generally treat the animal for cough with antibiotic and antitussive agents, right? Cough expectorant and antibiotic, but we never think that it may have some worm in the trachea because trachea may contain some worm and that worm is tracheal worm known as phyloridis 
costly rai then i am telling about another round worm that remains in the blood vessels can you imagine in the blood vessels there is worm and this vessel worm is known as angiostongylus besora so this worm remains in the vessels that is very difficult and as a whole the worm remains in the vessels the animals gets emaciated and run down right so what about nutrition you are giving animal is not growing not getting its health not getting enough i mean fat in the body or muscles in the body right so whatever input you are giving the result is not satisfactory animal is not looking healthy then i am telling about another worm that is also a round worm that remains the heart of the dog dog or canine is one only one species or only one domestic animal or domestic pets where there is worm in the heart if you make post mortem you may find the round worms in the heart or if you examine the blood you may get the microfilaria of the heart worm you call dirofilaria imitis right so dirofilaria imitis is a real problem because the animal will go on having cough an early exhaustion little bit walk it will be very much exhausted and there is dry cough if you take take the animal to walk for some walk if you take the animal for walk it will have exhaustion at the same time coughing and coughing will continue to exist because you are not knowing you are not aware of the heart worm so when you get such cough for a long time in that case you must examine the blood for detection of dirofilaria or microfilaria of dirofilaria imitis right or there are some kit also available you can apply the kits or there are some modified test we i call it modified not technique with the help of that also you can find out the microfilaria in the blood now the question comes when should i collect the blood in case of man microfilaria is generally collected when the man is sleeping in the bed that means in lateral recumbency for a long time and then you collect the blood so i have worked on this subject start to find out the periodicity of whether the nocturnal periodicity exists like man in dog or not but my findings shows that it is not like that you can get if you collect the blood you can collect the blood any time there is no nocturnal periodicity like periodicity like human being now the question arises why we do not get parasites or microfilaria throughout the day and night in case of human being only in the night we get the microfilaria doctor used to say go and collect the blood when it's see right why the thing is this when the animal when the animal is running or in activity right when the animal is in under activity so oxygen consumption goes to the most oxygen goes to the periphery right so we collect the blood from the peripheral vessel peripheral vessels but but when in case in case of man this is not the picture when the animal when the animal that is man is under rest in the night going for sleep so what happens the oxygen goes to the maximum oxygen remains in the lungs maximum so oxygen tension is more in the lungs and therefore the parasite they run in the lungs area they do not remain in the periphery they go in the lungs area to consume the oxygen and therefore if you collect the blood from the periphery you don't get the parasite this is the this is the phenomenon anyway i'm not going to elaborate this but what i want to emphasize upon that 
heartworm is a problem when you get a mastitated dog, when you get an exhausted dog, when you get a chronic cough in a dog, you may suspect about heartworm and you may collect the blood and examine and try to find out whether it is having positive or not, it is having filaria or not. If it is a filaria, the treatment will be different, right? Then another worm I'm telling you, and this filaria is coming from the your insects, these mosquitoes. Mosquito bite is the important agent or vector for transmission of this tariffer infection. Not a very important worm. Sometimes dog used to come with, to the physician or doctor with the problem of chronic vomition. Vomition is continuing. Animal is unable to eat and whatever the animal eats gets vomited. So vomition is a problem or MSC is a problem and MSC is continuous for a considerable period of time and whatever medicine is given for controlling the vomition, antiemetic drugs or other varieties of drugs, but the vomition is not being controlled. Why? Because there is a worm in the esophagus. That worm is known as esophageal worm, commonly we call and scientifically we call spirocircal It's a very important thing. So when you get a chronic cough for a long time, you must palpate the esophageal region to find out whether there are any nodules or whether there is any pain. And at the same time, you go for the stool. Because these worms remain in the esophagus initially, then it may go to various parts of the intestine and produce ulcerative lesions. And the stool may become mucus, mucus, mucus and blood mixed stool you may get. And therefore, if you want to diagnose this spirocircal loopy infection, the egg is very, very fine and meticulous examination is required and trained eye is also required. Otherwise, you may miss the field and you will find the spirocircal loopy egg in the feces or in the vomitus. Right? So if you get the spirocircal loopy in the vomitus or in the stool, you are confirmed that my animal is suffering from spirocircal loopy. So the treatment for spirocircal loopy, if you can offer, and at the same time supportive treatment if you can give to the dog, gradually the dog may improve. Permission may be relieved gradually. I have myself have treated a case from Mindapur area that was suffering from spirocircal loopy for a long time. And ultimately, I could diagnose the spirocircal infection and get treatment and ultimately the dog was uh, dog was very free from dirofilia, sorry, spirocircal loopy infection and ultimately I could not recognize the dog. The health of the dog has become improved and looking very nice. Very difficult. The initial emaciation and finally I have seen a very healthy animals, very fatty animals. Since you can would find out the problem, you can identify the area where the problem is lies, then the solve is possible, right? So detection of the problem and then solving of the problem. If you cannot detect the problem, you cannot solve the problem. Otherwise you will go on beating in the wild and nest. Nothing will happen. You give multiple of drugs, but nothing will happen. Because you could not find out the actual reason. That has to be find out. Locate the problem. Then go jump for the treatment. Without locating the treatment, don't jump for the treatment. Right? That is my suggestion. Anyway, pyrocircal loop is an isovigial worm, which remains in the isovigial area, creates vomition, and vomition continues for a long time until unless the problem is corrected. Then we have got another worm, very small worm, we call thread worm, just like thread. Stongyloid is Tarcoralis, third worm, it also passes. It also just like round, round worm, it creates irritations in the bowel, irritation in the lower part of the bowel, in the rectum, it creates irritations, right? And the animal may rub the anus in the ground due to irritations. Then, 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 then I am telling about a worm which remains in the urinary bladder. You see, you see the animal, you see the dog. In, in every part, the dog is 
most of the organs is having some parasite. In the bladder, we, have, we, we get bladder worm, right? So, if you examine the urine, you will get the larvae. And the name of the worm is Capillaria glyca, bladder worm. Sometimes it may so happen, in the microscope, you are getting Capillaria plica, larvae. And at the same time, you are getting Dilophilaria, if it is larvae it may become, you may confuse. That has to be differentiated. This is bladder worm and this is heart worm. That has to be differentiated. Then, even if bladder, I have told you, now if I go to the kidney, even in the kidney, worm remains. Kidney worm. A dog may have worm in the kidney, we call it kidney worms. And in the kidney worms is known as Diagotophyma renally. And if the kidney worms remains for a long time, so there is possibility of damage of the kidney leading to the renal failure. So you see, the cause of the renal failure, not only the autoimmune disease, not only the bacterial infection, not only the, not only the viral infection, but not only the, your food, right, toxin, but it may even be through round arm, right? So round arm should also be taken into zone of concentration while you go for treating the kidney diseases. Finally, I'm going to mention about a round arm which remains in the eye, right? In the eye, you will find some larvae is moving. Especially in large animal, in horse, cattle, you will find a lot of round worms moving in the eye. Larvae of round worms is moving in the eye and this is known as eye worm and scientifically we call it Thalagia species. So long I was discussing about round worms. In the round worm series I have discussed about the location of various round worm in various parts of the dog. Now I am going to discuss about cystodes or tapeworm. So I have more or less discussed about the brown worm and the location of brown worm in various organs of the dog. Now I am going to another worm that is known as cystodes and commonly known as tapeworm. Tapeworm is a very important worm. We give minimum importance in it, right? We, are no, we do not give that much of importance, but this is very important, not only for the dog, but also for the public health. It's very important. So of the tapeworm, let me mention about one, Diphylobotrium latum. This is one of the tapeworm, which remains in the intestine. And second is Diplidium caninum. So far the Diplidium caninum is concerned, I tell you, it cut free. So that's why sometimes we say, whether you have got cat or not, whether the cat is infected with flea or not, if the cat is infected with flea, at the same time flea is infected with tapeworm cyst or tapeworm egg, and if the dog swallow the flea, so along with the flea, swallow the tapeworm egg. Ultimately, that flow will suffer from tapeworm infection. The source of tapeworm, now the source of tapeworm for two reasons. One is directly, you have ingested the cyst, and secondly, through flea, right? Cat flea may produce tapeworm infection. That's why sometimes I used to say, dog and cat, Coexistence of dog and cat is no, not always worthy. But if both are healthy, free from ectoparasites or endoparasites, then it's all right. So one has to take more attention how to keep them healthy and how to keep them free from worm burden. Another is Echinococcus granulosus. It creates cysts in human beings. 
Then we have got tinea hydrogena, tinea PG formids, tinea tini formids, now this is pyrometra. The more or less all the tape arms are same, same but only thing the, their head suck or st strongly attached with the intestine. All the segments come out through the feces. Sometimes if you look at the feces, you will find that the feces contains a lot of white uh, smashed rice or just a pushed rice type of things moving or not moving. That means they are the segments of tapeworm. And it is very difficult sometimes to detach the mouth from the intestine. They remain in the intestine so tightly, head remains or scolex we call, remains so tightly in the intestine, it becomes increasingly difficult to detach it with medicine. Sometimes uh, treatment schedule has to be uh, reoriented to remove the tip -worm. And tip -worm is to suck the nutrition from the intestine of the dog. So the animal becomes emaciated, run down, and at the same time anemic, right? And the animal doesn't get any energy to move, right? Dull, depressed. So that is the matter of tapeworm. So while I am going to tell about the tapeworm, I want to say one thing, especially tinea hydrogena or tinea PG for me, what happens I tell you. Let me tell a little bit about the cycle, how it occurs. I have already told you that cat may be one of the agent, cat flea may be one of the agent, right? Another agent is that if you go to the meat shop, right? In the meat shop, butcher used to do, what they used to do? They get the cyst in the lungs or liver or intestine, they get cyst. And they used to cut and throw it in the ground and the dog is to swallow it. Right? If the dog swallow the cyst, see this will ultimately become tapeworm within 50 to 55 to 60 days in the dog. So dog will suffer from tapeworm due to cyst, cyst of goat. Right? Cyst of goat, if swallowed by the dog, that ultimately will remain as and uh, will remain, will uh, become adult tapeworm in the intestine of the dog. That's why my suggestion is that the municipality or the other authority or corporation, whatever it may be, they should discourage this practice. Butchards should be trained. Butchards should be trained and they should be discouraged to throw this cyst to the dog. Otherwise, the cycle will continue. Well, I am giving you the cycle. Suppose a goat has voided the feces in the ground containing worm, right? Dog has consumed it, tap worm will be in the, sorry, dog has excreted the feces in the ground and the goat or sheep water maybe has consumed the egg and cyst will be there, cyst will be formed in the various vital organs. And again from the cyst, dog will get the cyst from the butcher, the cycle will continue. So if you want to break the cycle, so don't allow the dog to consume the cyst. This is very important. Second thing I tell you, echinococcus granulosus is very dangerous tip -pop. Because if anybody, any children or human being, some or other, gets this, or ingests the egg. The egg is microscopic. You cannot see it. Along with food, you can take it. Or hand. Hand, you have touched the dog and put the hand in the mouth. So hand is the most important. Hand is the actually your dangerous tool for infection. So through hand, you may be contaminated. The man may be contaminated. If it gets contaminated, when you attain the age of 50 or 60, you will get a lot of big cyst in the abdomen. And it has surgeon used to operate and find it out. But if the root cause is the tapeworm cyst. Right? Root cause is the tapeworm cyst. So therefore, we should, we are 
fuddling the cat, uh, sorry, we are fuddling the dog, we are patting the dog, we are sleeping with the dog, right? We are kissing the dog, everything we are doing. But at the same time, we should take into consideration that my paw, my pet should be free from one burden. It should be free from one, one burden due to two reasons. One reason is for pet's sake, the other reason is for myself. For my sake and the pet's sake, the dog should be free from one burden. If you cannot do it, then there is every possibility of getting the infection. It may not produce disease like fever and other symptoms like viral and bacterial disease, but it is a slow poison, slow killer. Slowly and slowly it will kill you or it will damage your organs. Right? Therefore, one should be very, very cautious about it. So far, the round one is concerned, I tell you, what I was telling earlier, it has also got public health importance. Right? So the round your dog should be cleared from, free from the round worm also. If you do not clear the round worm, what will happen? If children have got the have got the access, because they used to uh, play with the dogs, they are very close contact with the dogs. And somehow or other, some egg of this toxocara or hookworm is ingested by a child or ingested by a man. What will happen? The life cycle will not be complete because it is a parent host. So what will happen? This will lodge in some organs. So they will migrate. Sometimes they migrate through the viscera. We call visceral larva migrants. Means all the organs where from this larva will migrate, they will, they will be damaged. So liver may be damaged, lungs may be damaged, right? So visceral larva migraine is one. If it migrates through the skin, so there will be cutaneous larva migraines. You get a lot of eruptions in the skin, right? If it goes for the nerves, so there will be neural larva migraines, right? Because larva has gone to the brain, says the central nervous system. But sometimes it goes to the eye, we call ocular larva migrants. So what I finally tell you, that tapeworm or the roundworm, whichever may be, they are not only the problem of the pets, it is indirectly a problem to the pet owner. So my candid Suggestion would be that love the pet, not the diseases. So make them free from warm burden and keep them healthy and try to remain healthy or try your family leads a healthier life. Don't invite problem from dog. If you invite from dog, it will be difficult for the medical practitioners to, sometimes to diagnose and you're, you may suffer for this for a long time. Let, let me give an overview how to control this type of disease. That means disease which is transferred from pet to man, from man to pet, like that. We call it zoonotic diseases or how to control zoonotic Worms. So what we'll do, we just take into consideration on certain points, certain aspects. One is a regular cleaning of the dog house or premises with disinfectant. When you use disinfectant, my suggestion would be don't use carbolic acid, that means don't use phenol and the lysol. Don't use phenol or lysol or carbolic acid containing material. Right? In spite of that, instead of that, you can go for water or other disinfectants. Right? 
sub loan debt also, etc., etc., you to. Care should be taken not to offer raw meat or raw fish because this meat or fish may contain cyst of or larva of parasites. Wash your hands with soap or antiseptic lotion before handling the dog because you may carry some germs from outside and therefore if you want to avoid it you just wash your hands with soap antiseptic lotion and then handle and when the dog is ill you try to separate the infected one from the healthier one separation is very important you call quarantine sometimes that is very important. I have seen in my practice life many of the owners, especially female folk, they used to kiss the dog directly. I shall request them not to kiss in that way. Because if you kiss, you can may ingest some of the warm segments or eggs. But if you are sure that your dog has been given proper deworming and there is no chance of such infection in that case you can kiss otherwise he's from a distance don't directly kiss because your dog's hair may matter with some worms or larvae or eggs and i am again telling eggs are not visible they are microscopic so it is not wise to kiss, it's dangerous if the dog is having some warm burden. Even don't allow the dog to lick your face, your hands or any parts if you consider that it has not been properly dewormed. Wash the utensils because it was utensil contains soap and detergent. Offer food separate in separate bowl for separate dog. Children should not be allowed to children should not be allowed to play with the infected dog. I tell you now power virus infection is going on. Or coronavirus infection is going on. Don't allow the children because they get may get the infection. Right? If they somehow or other the feces or vomitus they touch, put their hand in the mouth, in that case it will be a problem. So when the animal is sick, separate the animal for some time. When it is all right, then allow it to play with your children. My suggestion would be pregnant lady should not go for gardening. Because in the garden, cat and the dog used to defecate. And they dig some mud and cover it, cover the feces. And the feces may contain toxoplasma gondii. It's a very, very important putulva. Very, very important putulva. It may affect the child while the child is in the womb, in the belly, the womb. And the child will be born deformed child. So very deformed child is expected for mother or there will be abortion. So my suggestion would be a pregnant lady should not go for gardening because you do not know many cats and many dogs are coming from different sources from outside and it may defecate your garden in the garden. So my suggestion would be don't pregnant lady should not go for gardening because they may excrete toxoplasma gondii cyst. Toxoplasma gondii infection. Very important infection, I tell you. Toxoplasma gondii. When you go in the garden, when you go in the street, when you go in the park, returning from there, you should wash your hands, feet, and if possible, you just change your clothes also. Right? Again, I tell you, to try to keep up shoes outside the outside area to avoid the Vulnerable disease to spread by bite because you may, your shoe may contain some 
feces, right? A mud containing feces. So that's why it should be separated from the room or separated from the access of the dog, right? So dog should not be allowed to should not be allowed to lick or bite the shoe or chappal, whatever you call, it, right? So this is also important. In an cell, it will be told that the control is nothing. Control is here. Number one, keep the dog healthy. Number two, keep the premises free from warm. Number third, you yourself maintain the biosecurity. That means when you are coming from outside, wash your hands, right? And keep your shoes away from the reach of the dog. Through this video, there may be some apprehension in the mind of the owner. But I say there is no apprehension, only only our intelligence and mindset to deworm the dog at regular interval as per the suggestion of the physician or as per the prescriptions maintained, uh, mentioned in the level of the pack. Right? Finally, I can say that you love the dog, not the diseases. Thank you. Hope you are liking our video today. If yes, like, share and comment. Also subscribe our channel. We will be coming soon with a new interesting video very soon.